So we got those King of the Streets times. We are not as slow as we thought we were. Mark Vine has a really big live stream coming up this week. The clan still seems to be having issues. And the state of the no prep RC hobby. We'll dig into some of my YouTube analytics and show you guys what's going on. I'm Chad. This is the Dorky and 40 RC channel. And we are going to get fast on Facebook today. So let's go. Good evening to all 8,900 now of you lovely subscribers to the channel. Thank you so much for devoting your time to me and the community we are building here on the dorky and 40 rc channel i greatly appreciate it and i know all of you fellow community members appreciate it as well if you're driving down the road listening to this there's not much visual here a lot of talking so feel free to step back just kind of listen to one or at home crack up a cold one and let's get to it first thing i will show you that i have not just been doing bench racing I actually have got the car all cleaned up. Everything is installed, ready to go. Redid the shocks. We are ready to get out and do some testing. I probably could have went out yesterday, but man, I really needed to get a jump on the yard and get things cleaned up. I'll be have to, I'll have to do some extra work around my dad's house this spring and maybe summer since he's still recovering from a long hospital stay. So gotta, gotta do those responsible things. A couple links down in the description, your GNS power cords. You can take them in and out all of your cars, hardwire them up to your GNSS. Still need to do that and do a video on that. I've got a link in the description below where you can get that. So you, every time you go testing, you are going to have a charged GPS unit. Mr. Corey Sellis sent me some of these really cool engine sleeves here, which we'll take a look at a little bit closer. Now you can get these by messaging him uh, himself on his Facebook page. And I'll put a link to his page in the description below. Hopefully that doesn't turn out to be too bad for him and people bug him like crazy in the middle of the night, or that could be a good thing. Uh, you can also get these sleeve protectors at tsgcarbonworks.com. And these are great guys. I mean, this is probably one of the best, you know, six to $7 investments that you can make. Um, they come in all different colors. He's got blue and gray and black. And you know, the reason why you want something like this on your motor is basically to save your motor. The smallest little pebble or anything can get inside the rotor there and just ruin the thing. So you want some type of protection. You might see pictures of people's cars online that have tape and things like that. That is the reason why. Maybe some of them have prototype stuff we don't know about, but the main reason is for protection. Now, this is kind of a nice, very, very tight, stretchy material. I've seen people use like gauze or different type of tapes and yeah you could do that or something but why not support somebody in the hobby with a quick little purchase that could end up saving you a lot of money maybe pick up a couple and give them to your friends as well you could probably even use these on any kind of motor that you have that has any open holes or cans um you know in a 540 size probably couldn't get them bigger but maybe he would make them bigger in the future for those kind of motors so thanks a lot, Corey, for sending these out. And I don't have to worry about ever losing a motor now. And then, of course, we can't forget about Get Stuck Tire Prep, Jeff Suckerell. Um, go to his page here and just check it out. You know, tons of the winner of the King of the Streets and tons of other people were running Get Stuck and also his actual tire prep that he has. So you've got prep, you've got the conditioner. He has sent me a list, a detailed list of instructions that we'll be going over with you guys on the videos on how to use it in a basic fashion or how to use it in a more advanced fashion. So what a lot of the racers are doing now, things with heat guns and multiple applications and all kinds of stuff. Now I haven't actually applied any of the actual prep to any tires yet, but I did actually start the pre-treatment process on uh, my reactions from last year. So these were already broke in and already ran and stuff like that. But man, I tell you, you know, just the way they, they feel and sound. And, you know, if you look at that rubber, look how nice that tire looks. I mean, it looks basically brand new. I just pre-treated this the other day once with some heat and they've been in the bags. There's a picture of the other one looking real good. And we're going to go through and we're going to treat these tires a couple times uh, with his WAP tire prep conditioner in between race stuff and everything else. 
So I cannot wait to get stuck with this stuff. So there you go. So while we're speaking about Jeff, we'll go ahead and speak about him and Mark Vine. Last year when I started all this no prep stuff, well, the year before, but when it got big last year, I don't think that anybody really contributed more to like my success than Mark Vine and Jeff Zuccarell. And really it was their willingness to go ahead and share things and how to use the San Juan M17. Mark Vine did like a big video on Desert Hobbies live stream that was really popular that just basically showed everybody how to tune your car with the M17 using an RX-8 ESC. Now, 90% of that stuff still applies, even for me most of the time. Jeff helped me take it to the next level by help having me understand how to actually use power curves instead of ramps. So to share knowledge like that and just make everything better with the community is just great. So thanks to those guys. And the whole reason why I'm bringing it up is Mark Vine does these little YouTube, uh, actually just Facebook live streams um, every once in a while. And this week um, he's gonna be talking about traction compound. So it's Thursday night at six o'clock Arizona time. So go ahead and do your you know, calculation for that. I believe that that means here in Eastern Standard Time, that would be at nine o'clock. I think Arizona is mountain or, uh, so they might be either two or three hours. So I'll have to double check on that. But you can't beat that, you know, anytime that you can get really great information from an expert like Mark Vine, it's just fantastic. And if some of you guys don't know who Mark Vine is, he's pretty much the innovator and creator of the bullet chassis, which was the most successful chassis that there was last year. You know, you might not have heard his name recently this year because he hasn't won like the big premier events. More people are now familiar with Samantha and Joey Davis, but you know, Mark is committed to the hobby. He's a great dude. Um, seems like a really great guy online. Probably, I wish he could do what we do here on the community, but you know, it seems like he does have a lot of, of busy obligations just in life as we all do. And then of course, he's really, he's out testing his Arizona, man. He's not stuck in a basement like this guy here is. So it seems like people are starting to get their voodoo tire shipped to them. Um, it seems like my order is held up because evidently they cannot get the foams. So there's a lot of funny memes going out and stuff on there. I really can't get a judge for the market for the voodoos right now. People are really offering out some really odd and weird things. So it's kind of hard to tell who really wants them and who doesn't and how much they're willing to pay right now. So I guess it'll be interesting to see how things play out over the next month or two. Once the rest of us start getting our voodoo tires, if people are really down to like start paying that triple to quadruple price on the tires again, I hope it doesn't get that crazy. You know, I plan on running all mine and giving of course away a set or two here on the channel. Unfortunately, I did only order a couple sets of foams. I don't know why I did that. I should have ordered a set of foams for every tires. So we might end up having some tires with some foams inside of them and we might have to get creative and break those things apart somehow whenever those tires kind of start wearing down on us. Last week, everybody was ready to sell their cars because they saw Samantha run a 169. Hey, that's great. Um, I've listened to Tyler and Sean's podcast about that, the guys that helped do the King of the Streets, and it really does make sense and it makes me appreciate that event even more just listening to their feedback, you know. It's all about being a street race. So your day, your, your guys that are running and gals that are running the first day and the first passes, are their passes are going to be nowhere near at the end of the, the track and the passes are going to be two or three days later. Once there's so much traction compound down there and they are just able to launch that stuff. Now, of course, it does come down to a gamble on whether or not your car is going to hold and everything else. But these guys are pretty, they know what their cars are going to do for sure. Now, it's just great to hear them say, you know, we didn't get to times until this week. Instant green, heads up racing. Nobody knew what the other person was doing. And as they say, it's a street race, man. The street changed over time and it got faster and it was all about who could adapt. We don't know that if there's somebody that couldn't make it past that first or second round that they couldn't have done better in the end when there was more traction. 
It's awesome. It's as close to street outlaws as you can get. You know, they talk about it all the time. The more rubber they get laid down on the road that they go to, the faster and more confident they get with their tunes. So King of the Streets, definitely cool. The times, you know, there's, I'll put a link in the description below about the actual times for King of the Streets. Um, you know, they're one eights, one nines, you know, nothing super crazy that's on there. So like everybody that's watching is like right there in striking distance, man. Those were just qualifying times too. You can only imagine that if you went there and qualified and ran like a one nine, that if you had your stuff together, you could lick down a good program. Now, of course that we we're going up against these like giant programs and teams and all this kind of stuff now. So it's going to be a lot tougher for like an average Joe, like myself to go in there and just run through everybody without all of this help and all of this excitement and knowledge around me from data and everything else. So we saw that with the McLean team and we'll talk about that. You know, they were all running different things where, you know, you've got, the R1 team all running the same R1 car motor ESC. So their data is like top notch that they can pass on to each person where if we are running different, you know, tires, different cars, different motors, then we're never going to really be able to get to the top. Sounds like they're going to fix that. So let's get to the YouTube stuff here. So don't want to hide nothing here. You can see that over the past 90 days, I've made a blistering $760 on YouTube, and that includes this month still. So haven't got paid for this month, won't happen to next month. So there's the money aspect for you. You know, I make around $250 a month on YouTube, which goes to paying for Adobe Premiere and stuff like that. And again, maybe I have a little bit left over that throws towards the hobby and no means is this ship paying for itself. I'll never get back what I put into it, but it doesn't matter. I just paid a pretty big amount of money to ship a body for the giveaway this week. So, you know, that money obviously is going towards that again. Congratulations, DJ Brady. And, you know, we'll be having some more giveaways here on the channel. But more importantly, what I like to look at is just all the different metrics. So really it's based on how much you actually post. And we know in February and March, I posted a lot more videos. So naturally you're going to get a lot more views and everything like that. Now I don't do any cross posting. I don't believe in just kind of like blasting stuff all over Facebook and stuff, trying to get like views and subscribers and everything. That was kind of like the old way that I used to do stuff. Now I just like to keep and control everything here. If it's an important video that I think you should know about, then I will cross post some for sure. So that way everybody knows what's going on. But the best thing is, is that, you know, YouTube's going to really flag and put out like your highest, you know, your, your most viewed videos or your most search videos. And the things that are great are, you know, the first one is, my ghost Raider video, which I think there's a lot of great information in there still. And a lot of it really holds up the DR 10 M video. People are super excited about that. Obviously it just keeps on going on up, uh, motor gearing and stuff. This is when me and my buddy Brandon were out for like a week straight and put in like 36 to 40 hours of actual testing, like trying to see how much of a difference there was between 87, 20, 9018, 9017, wrote down everything, did all the stuff. Um, you know, this right here talks about the using uh, radio uh, launching and all ramping and stuff. It's kind of a not a good video just because it was just a little bit with my Futaba. It was before I got into the M17. So the Mamba Monster 8S video, the Castle 1412 drag motor video is still is just super hot. Upgrading your RTR cars, Trinity three turn, and of course my DJI Traxxas TRX4 um, is pretty big on there. Now the reach is really cool just because over 90 days, we've had 42,000 point, you know, almost 43,000 unique viewers and 111,000 views and we're growing uh when it comes to subscribers you know we've added 720 subscribers in the past 90 days now when i look at these reach numbers and i see these unique viewers the one important actual number to look at is how many people watch your video and then how many come back because those are the people that i look at as far as 
you know, I think we do a good job here and they would be super interested in returning. And you always see these kind of like peaks and valleys in this number based on when new people come in and new people go out. So if we go back 365 days on this, you're gonna see these peaks and valleys. So if you go back to around August of last year, like you can see that we had a big explosion last summer and then things kind of died down and now we're having another big explosion again. If we go back and look at all of 2021, we'll probably see the same thing over here. You'll see that those lines weren't quite crossing back then because the channel was just starting to grow. But you can see like this time last year, when people were starting to get into no prep again, you can see how these lines converge and actually come together. So in my opinion, that basically shows that we're in a bump right now and things are on the up and up when it comes to actual no prep drag racing scene. Again, how many people are actually in the scene? You know, 42,000, 43,000 people. I think that's qu quite a stretch. I would probably peg that number closer to 20 to 25,000 with about 5,000 fully engaged people, maybe 10,000. It's hard to say, but you know, it, everybody talks about how this is the fastest growing genre of RC that they've ever seen. Well, I also think it's the fastest genre where people drop right off. At. And that's an unfortunate thing, but I think people get into this stuff for a couple months and they generally either have a great time and they keep on going or a large percentage of them really just drop off because they lose interest. The money thing, you know, they get frustrated with not having now how to use the products or whatever. And hopefully that's our job to try to keep them in there. Seeing the results of that DR10M video really makes me excited for the hobby because that's a car, again, I've said it before that I think is just going to like be a one-stop shop for everybody where they're not going to have to order four or five things from different manufacturers just to get their car built if they can even get it because we all know we're in like this supply chain nastiness right now which is one reason why I didn't run the castle yet because I need two pinion gear sizes and a five millimeter shaft that I cannot get in order to test out the final drive ratios that I really want to test. So I need that 26 and I need that 27. I got the 27 coming. 26 is on back order. Who knows? So we'll switch over and talk about McLaren a little bit. And, you know, they're still having problems with their ESCs. I kind of add this to like every ESC comment that I see just kind of hoping that somebody is going to see this and from McLaren and either I don't know, address this or something. I do not think that the McLaren ESC has been right since they had the recall. My first generation DRK still runs, runs great. I've done the longest burnouts with it when I got it because I didn't know what I was doing. I've had it like over temp or overheat like once or twice and the thing's thermal shut down and still ran fine when I didn't know what I was doing. So I don't understand why these problems keep on happening and they seem to have keep on happening since like July of August last year when they were on like batch three or four and they had that recall. You know, I got my, went and picked one up, put it in the car to have a backup, did one pass on it and it did the same thing. The whole internal, like, you know, 12 volt rail, FET rail or whatever just dies out. 5 volt rail still works. You can still plug it into your C. You can still flash it. You can do everything. The only thing is, is it does not move anything. So it's the same problem that's been going on. And I just wish they would fix it. You know, I mean, I wish them all the luck. They've obviously outsell every ESC out there, I would say, by a healthy margin. Two to one, three to one, whatever. So, of course, you're going to see more broken ESCs. But it's just story after story of the same thing as you scroll down through their page. And these aren't like week and two week old posts. These are like, it's every day. So it's kind of, kind of crazy. Quick stop by my friends on the castle Mamba monster page. And you can see that they are all constantly throwing down crazy times. JFab again, 187 at 85 miles per hour. 
with the Castle 6400. I mean, come on, man. Are you serious? 85 miles an hour? Whew, you got to feel good about that. That is for sure. He's running an Apollo car. That's awesome. And, you know, it's I, first time people running motors, you know, 205, 205, 73 miles an hour, 75 miles an hour. The Castle system is, in my opinion, where you want to be, guys, especially the newer guys. And the reason why, it's just a big boy. It's, an, it's a huge ESC. It's made for A-scale cars. It's going to handle anything that you can throw at it. Like, you really have to be... I don't know. You got to have bad luck for it just to break. I think hopefully I'm not eating my own words here in like two months, but you know, for right now, I mean, last year I poured every freaking degree of timing I could into that thing. Now I did take care of it, let it rest cool in between rounds, all that kind of stuff. Didn't hot lap it a bunch and all that kind of stuff. But you know, and I don't do long burnouts cause I just, you know, we all know that's not what you do once you start learning how to use prep, but it just, I don't know. It just works. And the motor seems like it's working fantastic if we can get five millimeter pinions in stock. So Tim Smith did a live stream this week instead of uh, the TSR podcast show. And he kind of talked about some of the stuff that we talked about earlier. And he did do something with his car. I can't find it, though. I've been looking for you guys where he basically went over every piece that is on his car now. And I can't find it. So. I don't know if it was taken down or what. I don't know why he would do that unless somebody told him not to and he had something up. I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to keep on looking for it, though. It's unfortunate I didn't save that. Usually when I see little nuggets like that, I at least take a picture of them with my phone, all the vital information. So I've got that. You know, he runs the same car as me. And that was a lot of the things that he spoke about on his podcast or his live cast on uh, Facebook was what we said earlier was that, you know, Team McLean was the only thing in common with Team McLean is they were all running the DRK. I think they had different motors. They all had different chassis, probably all ran uh, basically about the same tire. And there just wasn't a whole lot of consistency and like data sharing and everything like that. And, you know, you don't win like that. We saw what the R1 team did. So they are, it sounds like they're pulling things back. They're all going to try to regroup. And it does sound like the five-star breakout is going to be the car that everybody is going forward. I've seen some people have left the team pointing fingers at certain individuals. We all will never know the whole stuff behind all that. And I definitely don't want to get into that. I've had some recent little drama myself with some stuff in the industry, but you know, we don't want to talk about any of that stuff. It's their business and whatever happens happens. Just wish everybody success. And I would like to see team McLean, like pull it all together. You know, if it wasn't for the DRK, I don't think I would have the excitement that I had in the sport because when I first got that thing out last March and April, that was the first time that I could actually get down the road every single time compared to the year before when I was trying to roll on the trigger with my slash and my TQI remote, remote control and all that kind of fun stuff. So that's really about going to do it for all of us this night on Fast on Facebook. We got a lot of stuff coming up again, as I said. You know the car is ready. Keep an eye on the forecast here. Rain, 50 degrees all week. Shouldn't have to worry about salt on the roads anymore, which is a great thing. That way we don't have to worry about sugar cooking up our cars. Hopefully my voodoos will be shipping soon so we can get those babies tested out. I cannot wait to test out the power on that castle motor. We'll talk more about the car and what all I've done to it. I've taken the simplest lazy man's approach. And I really have changed nothing except for the motor, the waterfall brace and redid the shock oils and cleaned everything up. I want to try to keep it as consistent as possible. So that way we can build off of what we had last year. It's a big goal. Of the channels just try to keep things consistent. I don't want you guys having to come back here and seeing me running something new every day or every month and me not be able to provide you with valuable information. I think things like learning how to prep these tires and using tire prep correctly. Like now that Jeff has given me like a primer of the many, many ways that we can get this stuff to run, you know, we'll be going over all that. That's the important stuff. 
I think Big Chief said it last year that the tires and the prep were really the main thing in No Prep RC. And guess what? That's exactly what just happened at King of the Streets. There was more prep on the ground and people kept running faster and faster times. As long as you could control that power, keep your car on the ground and everything held together, you're going to win that thing. So we will see you guys on the next episode. Hopefully something other than this bench racing stuff. We will talk to you later. Peace.